patriarch of college football's first family. A single win from one of coaching's most coveted milestones. To get there, only flesh and blood stands in his way. A son on the other sidelines and his bow to delay the inevitable for one more week. By the numbers, Bobby Bowden's lifetime brushstrokes have painted a masterpiece that's nearing completion. A national championship, unsurpassed bold success, winning his team of the decade, top four finish, 12 years and counting. Adding win number 300 moves him into an elite fraternity of the game's all-time greats. Over 30 members of the extended Bowden family are on hand here tonight. Some coaching, some cheering, others completely agonizing over divided loyalties. Father beats son for the first time in college football history as number one Florida State comes calling on Clemson. Well, the weather, it is actually a little chill on the pumpkin in the deep south. 55 right now. It's supposed to go down to around 33 degrees. Wind could be a factor tonight. Left to right, 50 miles an hour. Coach Bobby Bowden, and uh, I'm sure that these guys are glad just to be on the sideline and get this game underway and get away from all the media and the hype. And it's time to play football. And an absolute packed house tonight. As you look at Lazara, three of 12 kickoffs for touchbacks this year. In fact, Bobby said earlier this week, as you look at the return men, Gardner and also Bolden, he said, I feel more comfort on the practice field because I can get away from all the outside things. From the six yard line, this is Gardner. We are underway and good. Heavens, what a hit at the 24 yard line as number two Eric Meekins a freshman comes downfield to make the stop. Okay here are the Dell computer starting lineups Chris Winkie at quarterback Travis Miner the leading rusher on this ball club out of Baton Rouge along with Dan Kendra the receivers spraying the tight end and there you see him Peter Warwick will start Ron Dugan's on the other side and in the offensive line a little bit of a rustle as far as Florida State is concerned Montre Holland starts in the place of Jason Whitaker. Whitaker ill today. And Whitaker said to be their best offensive lineman. Play action, pass incomplete, and it gives us an opportunity to take a look at the Tigers defense. Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator. McKenzie Jolly, he's one of the captains tonight. Jason Holloman and Terry Bryant. The linebackers a change there this week. Williams has been moved to back up in the middle, and Bodrick, who had 12 tackles against Maryland, gets the start. Ardley, Hapley, Carswell, and Polite in the secondary. Second down and 10. And this is Minor. Off right guard crosses the 25 to around the 27. McKenzie is there to make the tackle. And this crowd is very pumped and into this ball game. They're excited, Ron, and this defense has given up 65 points in the last two games. And when we talked to Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator, they said he said this week they got to play with a lot of emotion. Well, they started that way. So it's third down. The line to make is about the 34 and a half yard line. See if Warwick gets his first. Pass in uh, two and a half games. Pressure was on. Runs out of harm's way. That was Bodrick who was after him. And the pass incomplete. And it'll be punting time as Cottrell comes on. Ron, the uh, strategy for Clemson early is to blitz Chris Winkie. They came after him. Just over a 41 yard average. 52 his longest and he is kicking into the breeze now lawyer the deep man for the Clemson Tigers and they have a return on it's a poor kick wobbly spiral and it goes away from lawyer now takes a huge Florida State bounce 
out of bounds at the 32 yard line. So let's take a look at the starters offensively for the Clemson Tigers. Dansler at quarterback, he's the number two, but he's made him very productive. Zachary and Witherspoon, the receivers. Lawyer is one of the wide receivers, along with Wofford, LeMay, the tight end. And up front with the offensive line, uh, Akil Smith, probably the most consistent. Kyle Young also playing very well at center. Watkins, Bugros, and John McDermott the remainder of the offensive front. They will go with a hurry up non huddle so there'll be times when we're getting it done quickly. Is this running play going to go for absolutely nothing? Tommy Pauley is there to hit Zachary and knock him down maybe for a loss. As defensively it's Reynolds, Johnson and Simon those two bookends in the middle as good as anybody has in the country at Seymour. Pauley who just made the tackle Jennings and Brian Allen and in the secondary. It is Edwards, Cody Gibson, and Sean Key is the free safety. Second down, and like I said, with a hurry up, Clemson is right back to the line of scrimmage. Shotgun, and they'll run option. This is Dantzler. Turns it up. Field has four, maybe five yards. And it's going to be second down and about five. And, Ron, with the no huddle, it limits Florida State substitution, gives the quarterback a chance to get a good pre-snap read on the defense and, and a long time to look at it. Reggie Heron said the other day that they think that they need to be at the line of scrimmage and then get ready to do something with 20 seconds 20 on that place to go. That is very quick. Third down, locks it over the middle, and uh, that is incomplete. Looking for pass interference. Corey Simon had good pressure on. So both teams, little nerves, few jitters, three and out. Yeah, I think to run. Both teams, you talked about the atmosphere. The atmosphere is great here right now. The crowd's into the ball game. I think both teams feeling each other out in that first series. Romano stands to punt. Junior out of West Palm Beach. He don't worry back. That's the reason for the booze is Pete is the deep man. Two years ago, he had a coming out party here. Over 300 all-purpose yards. They kick it away from him, and Tommy proving that he is a smart young coach. With Clemson and Florida State still scoreless, we pick up the action halfway through the first quarter. The Seminoles have the ball on their own 30-yard line, first down and 10, here on ESPN Classic. So their third offensive possession of the night is a scrimmage from the 30. Winky sings this one complete to Warwick. Dexter Polite is the man who was there, and now it looks as though Florida State's going to go to their own version of the hurry up. And Ron, the pressure that Clemson's putting on Florida State, I wouldn't be surprised you see a screen here real soon to slow down the rush of Clemson from the outside. It is a first down just across the 40. This is the. And try to run Travis Minor a little bit right inside of him. Short drop and quick pass to the sideline and Morgan again incomplete too tall for him normally in a big ball game when you look at the numbers minor is the guy that they they go to even more but we haven't seen that much of him in this game actually I think is at a pace that might even favor Clemson a little bit more the Florida yeah. State right now I think what's happened to Chris Winky is they've done a nice job of disguising coverages and they have him thrown off right now two of seven 22 yards for him here they come from the outside again and this one he's got complete Dugans. DeMarco Fox was out there with him and then very quickly you could see a lot of other orange jerseys coming into the vicinity to help out. Ron, what, when you get in a situation where you start getting a beat on the plan of Reggie Harry, what he does on second down, he's bringing both outside linebackers. Third down and six. Line to make just across the 50. He just joined us. No score. 7.15 to play. Opening quarter. Here they come again. They fake it on one side. Go back to zone. Pass to Morgan complete. And that'll be good for the first down plus about 10 yards. He gains 13 on the play. See that's the strategy on second and third down. Just wear out Chris Wanky and bring him. And they're, they're not giving him a lot of time to throw. He did a nice job there releasing the ball early. Robert Morgan with a good catch. And there, there comes the heat from the outside. One back offense. They could pick one of them up. Can't pick the other. Minor. 
Bounces it outside. Five yards, has 10, and counted off at 11. The longest run from scrimmage tonight. Minder has it, and on back to back plays, they move the chain. Yeah, Ron, that'll slow down the outside backers a little bit when you run inside of them. And Travis Meyer, you mentioned about how he comes up in big games. 12 games as a starter against top 25 teams. He's averaging 102 yards, six touchdowns, and 30 catches. So he comes up big. His longest run of the year, 47 yards. They go back to a shotgun. And those linebackers come from the outside in the blitz again. Florida State picks it up nicely. Warren spun down inside the 20. That's good for another Florida State first down. And all of a sudden, this Clemson defense that had been picking them and giving them a lot of trouble, three plays and three straight first down. And Ron, what, what's happening now, they go to two backs on first down right here, two backs, and they pick up the outside backers. Now you got it blocked. You block with maximum protection, only three receivers out. A good call by Mark Richt. And the chess match continues. Miner bounces it to the outside. At the 15, puts a head down, and he's going to have about eight yards on that play. Ardley submarined him. Let's see where they give him a spot. I think it's going to be about the 12 and a half yard line. And you, you see how he bends that right back. He gets the football. You give it to him about three and a half yards behind the line of scrimmage where he's square, and he can cut back against the green. That's exactly what he did. Reggie. Reggie. Yeah, Reggie's. <laughs> He's pulling everything out. Uh, he is so emotional when it comes to his team. You see the ball was never snapped. It is loose and recovered by Florida State. Now there are flags everywhere as former quarterback Dan Kendra made the recovery. Well, Florida State, had they lost that, uh, yeah, they would have gotten big. very fortunate. It just didn't come up. I think he pulled his hands up out a little bit early. And Ron, when we were looking at Reggie Herring there, I read a quote where he said about his young defense, he said, I can't lose any more here. I guess my eyebrows will be the next to go. <laughs> well, this is the eighth play of the drive. Second down in the line to make is about the nine and a half yard line. Right at the line. Inside the 20 yard line. Miner right up the gut, and he is just crushed. Jolly, one of the first men on the tackle, didn't help from the linebackers. Travis on the carry, looks on, uh, <laughs> visiting with the relatives and, uh, and friends as this one goes on. Jolly, an interesting thing, he's a captain for tonight. If you're a captain, you don't get to run the hill, touch the rock, and come down the hill because you have to come out early. He asked Tommy if he could give up being a captain tonight so he could run the hill in this ball game. Tommy said, no, you're a captain. You're going to come down early. Third down. Right over the middle. Dugans, and he will not have the first down. Mike? All right. What decision do you make? Do you, do you go on the fourth down, or do you get the short three points? I think you go for the fourth down right here. You're, you're expected to be the better ball club. You can pick up a yard, but they're going to kick the field goal. They're going to bring in the sure points with Janikowski. You want to get on the board, but Bobby Bond's been known to fake a field goal here and there. Alton is the holder, and Marcus will go down at around the 18-yard line, so it's a 28-yard attempt. And if any college in America has a true weapon, it is this, this gentleman right here, Sebastian Janikowski. Just got a delay he game. just yanked it. Boy, did he get lucky. A delay of game, and the crowd doesn't know it yet. The crowd doesn't know they're going to have to move back five yards, but he gets another shot. Yeah, he's got a practice shot. But Ron, you're so right. He is a weapon, a weapon on kickoffs where he kicks the ball out of the end zone, field position game. He's 255 pounds. Could be a fullback. So now the crowd gets silent. They think, well, we stopped him. And uh, not so. The clock stopped him. And he's going to get another attempt. This one will be off 33 yards. So we said outs in the holder. And of course, you remember last year's national championship game, Winky injured. And it was Marcus who was the quarterback for the Seminoles in that one.
good pass kick is up and he doesn't miss this one. So the first one he was allowed a mulligan on the delay of game and with 343 left in the opening quarter Janikowski puts the Seminoles up three to nothing. And Bowden looks on three to nothing the score 1142 left until halftime and Clemson again sitting raring to go on offense with a second and five and you see the Seminoles back off they go with a three man rush and here's Dantzler he's going to break that thing off for a good gain out over the 45 before Chris Hope will come up and make the tackle now we talk about a family affair it might look at this the coaches these are Clemson coaches Tommy of course uh, Brad Scott assistant head coach former uh, offensive coordinator for the Knowles Reggie Herring defensive coordinator uh, Florida State Hall of Famer former captain uh, Rick Stodd still stock still I should say former captain and of course Jack Hines who was a son in law so a uh, huge connection with the Seminoles here at Clemson Dantzler gonna have to tuck this one and run for his life and he gets out of bounds and they will spot him out at the 46 which is about the line of scrimmage and it was uh, Bradley Jennings who ran him out. They're doing a good job of scheming Florida State's defense. They've getting them in different different sets and then calling the place from the sideline. Jeff Bowden, another one of the sons who was the receivers coach for the Seminoles. Paces on the sideline. So actually this is impressive what uh, Tommy Bowden's club has and Rich Rodriguez had forced them to do because they do a great job of a four man rush and not bringing anybody but forced them into a three man. And of course, that is to protect against the scramble. And here he goes with a quarterback draw. Flag down run. Tommy Pauly comes over to make the tackle. We'll check the flag back at the line of scrimmage. Clemson, you can see pointing ahead, saying that yeah, it is offside. against the Seminoles. So they'll get five and the down. So it'll be second down at about two and a half. This one I was talking about in the open. Sometimes Florida State just look, get bored. They just just seems like they have so much talent, and I don't think they've been as impressive this year as we've seen them in the past. Well, I mentioned that guy right there, Mickey Andrews, who just says it exactly the way it is and what's on his mind. Side on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replayed the down. Mickey said on the conference call the other day, just. Very frankly, we have not played well enough to win a national championship. We must play better on defense. Of course, he's not talking about the offensive side of the ball, only his guys. Second down, and that's Zachary, who is going to be stopped after a gain of about a half yard. And now it's third down, Clemson. They need that ball just inside the Seminole 45 yard line. A nice job by Tommy Pauly, number 29. He read the run right away and he tackled Zachary in the hole, forcing this third down. So the decision now, they keep it on the ground as Florida State comes back with a four man rush. Or do they put it in the air from the shotgun dancer right over the middle and he's got it complete and that's Gardner. That's good. I believe. Well, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it's First good. Stop. Gibson is there defensively to make the stop. Gardner six foot three two hundred and eleven pounds a former quarterback in high school with a good catch. Came into the night with 45 catches, just keeps adding to it. First and 10, again they go with Zachary. And Zachary spinning around close to the 40 is uh, David Warren, who's a second teamer behind uh, Roland Seymour. And there's an example of what kind of depth they have on a defensive front. Warren, the USA Defensive Player of the Year a couple of years ago, actually three years ago, out of uh, Tyler John Tyler out in Texas. Related to Earl Campbell, people were uh, some were surprised that he didn't go to Texas, but he said he wanted to go and play for the Seminoles. He thought he would enjoy the national publicity, and they get plenty of that as they he has witnessed here tonight. Texas is getting a little bit now themselves. That's a huge win for Mac Brown today. You're right.
drive to the snap. False start on the offense. That's a five yard penalty. We still have third down. Mike, I'll tell you what happened earlier this week, and this is what you have seniors for. Corey Simon just really not only an outstanding football player, he is an outstanding young man. And he called a senior meeting. Coach Bowden called them together uh, in the middle of the week. They had their regular coaches meeting with the players, and he said, Coach, I'd like to have a senior meeting. They went over underneath that big tree out on the, uh, on the practice field, and supposedly none of the coaches went over there, but the gist of the conversation a couple of the players said it was just a thing of, hey, keep your heads on straight and let's forget all these distractions. This is an important game. This ball is thrown up for grabs and almost intercepted. That was Sean Key, who was retreating and tried to catch it over his head. Well, that was David Warren that just came in with a hit on Dantzler and uh, forced the fly, fly ball. Mike, let's go back to the, what I said about Corey Simon, Owen, a very responsible kid and a, and a very good football player, but also one of the leaders on this team. Uh, I know that you appreciate it as a coach, having a young man like that who would call the seniors together and collectively say, hey, we got, we got to get it done and lead. And that's what they're looking for tonight, a little bit more consistency out of this, out of this team. Pressure, Dantzler gets whacked again, and that ball is overthrown. Now, one of the things in watching this offense that happens quite a bit is the quarterback gets hit a lot. Well, and rolling, when you're playing somebody yeah. like Florida State, I don't know how wise that well, is. Well, any offense where you open it up and you have five receivers in the ball game, Roland Seymour now has not been blocked the last two times. And he's hit number one, Woodrow Dantzler. So, Romano, you see his two kicks. What an average tonight, 53 and a half, and you hear the boos. That means that uh, Peter Warwick is the deep man for the Seminoles. And Romano is going to throw a pass. He's got a man wide open at the 30. First and 10 comes in the first trick play of the night, and it's Williams, a reserve linebacker. And I almost thought I saw a smile on Bobby's face. I'll tell you what Paul Brown, the great coach of the Cleveland Browns and, and Bengals, used to talk about when you have trick plays, run yours first. So Tommy Bowden draws first blood because that discourages the other coach from calling a play. Williams, who normally is a starter at linebacker, and we mentioned to you that Bodrick was getting to start tonight. He's one of the personal protectors, right? Yes, and they know so much about Florida State with that coaching connection. Here we go with Zach. Run to the right. Has five. Has ten. Well, maybe they're going to stop it at nine and a half yards. Sean Key will make the tackle. And again, this crowd is up and they are cheering. It's a three to nothing ball game. And Clemson not only very much in this thing, but a touchdown right here. And this 86,000 plus is going to go on its ear. LeMay and Sergalis, the two tight ends in the ball game for the Clemson Tigers. Zachary right up the middle. So it's going to be third down, and you can see how far they need. Mickey Andrews standing on the sideline, got a hand on Reggie Durden on his shoulder pads. I'm sure getting ready to send him in the ballgame after this play, depending on what happens. And now with the quick substitutions, they get an extra defense or an extra tight end in the ballgame. And a handoff straight ahead. And they got it. Zachary will pick up the first down. Brian Allen on the tackle. It was Woodward, the third tight end yeah. they rushed in. They're doing a good job of formationing a Florida State's defense because they'll run somebody on, then they adjust them, and they're catching Florida State with a quick movement. Here they move them to the left. Florida State can't adjust. They get the first down. Chagallis was the man who was throwing the block. Fakes it to Zachary. Now tries to throw the ball. Still on his feet. Broke two tackles, and he's down to the seven-yard line. Gibson finally put a stop on Woodrow Dantzler. But Tommy Pauley had a shot at him. Couldn't bring him down. Didn't wrap up. Woodrow Dantzler, who's 5'11", 200 pounds, sophomore. You talked about a run. He took over the quarterback job, and, and he gives an added threat. The run. 13 plays, 65 yards so far. Dantzler, 53 yards rushing and 14 by the rest of the team and a timeout taken by Florida State. And the crowd applauds knowing that maybe Mickey Andrews and his guy a little confused right now. We'll take a timeout. 
back in Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina, very chilly Saturday night, and nobody is feeling the chill because it is very warm in the stands. And Mike, that is two defensive timeouts called by Florida State tonight. Twice, Clemson has caused confusion, and they had 12 men on the field. Yeah, with a hurry-up offense, and they're changing formations. Once they get inside the 30-yard line, they've had two tight ends one time, five receivers, and all of a sudden, they've caught Florida State with 12 men on the field. And they forced the timeout. They're hurrying up again. Chris Woods, the freshman, out of folks from Georgia was the fellow who was supposed to get off in the last play, and uh, Mickey was waiting for him on the sideline. Quarterback draw right up the middle. That is a great job. Reynolds is there. Corey Simon is there. Those two defensive tackles of Simon and Johnson, as I said earlier in the ballgame when we did the lineups, those bookends are as good as anybody has in America. Well, what makes it tough down here for the bookends and all the defense is because Woodrow Dantzler is such a good runner. And they spread you out. He tried to hit the quarterback draw on that last play. About to go under six minutes left until halftime. Dantzler throw got it right there. Touchdown, Gardner. to three Clemson with the extra point attempt coming up by Lazara the kick is up and he's good so as we go to break 617 remaining until halftime and our new score is Clemson seven and the Seminoles three so seven to three and the folks wearing orange here tonight have gotten terribly excited they are a big underdog in this ball game but everywhere you went in this small town this week, there was something painted on everybody's store window. As you look at Bolden, and hang on because he can get it done quickly. Back out across midfield and into Clemson territory, and Chris Campbell made the tackle after a 38-yard return. Ron, what happened on the touchdown play? Rod Gardner starts like it's going to be a quick slant. He moves inside, and he breaks outside on Thomas, the defensive back. Wide open for the touchdown. Mike, if, if you're wondering where Mrs. Bowden's loyalties lie, listen to this. Well, <laughs> to her left, that's Sue Hall. That is uh, Bobby Bowden's longtime administrative assistant. Winky. He's under pressure, runs up into the pocket, and he's got to be hit by Holliman. Ron, the best story I heard this week, all the Bowden stories this week about Tommy Bowden when he was going to West Virginia and he came upon the students. His dad was hung in effigy and he started up to get the dummy and uh, somebody said, you can't, who are you? And he said, I'm his son. And he said, you can't take it down. He said, no, I'm going to add some filler. He <laughs> said, he's fatter than you got him there. <laughs> but it was Tommy who went into the crowd. He was going to get that to uh, thing torn down as the pass goes to Morgan it is incomplete interesting that as Adrian said off the top of the telecast that uh, in the sixth grade he wrote a paper saying that he wanted to be a head coach and also his mom let him know she wanted him to be a dentist well he's pulling teeth tonight <laughs> three of seven on third down conversions for Florida State Winky tipped and almost intercepted by Polite. Well, Reggie Herring's been the story in this first half. His defense has played lights out on Florida State. Polite really almost had this interception he on almost, Peter Waring. He almost he would have walked this one in. Had a chance to intercept that pass. Trell to kick it away, waiting for the snap back at the 39-yard line, and Lawyer, the deep man. Remember the last time Florida State punted, they did not have a return person there. They had 11 men at the line of scrimmage. This time, they had the return on. And Lawyer runs away from it as it goes into the end zone, and it'll come out to the 20. A 
Well, they think the shovel pass got him wide open, and that's Lawyer. Fired, hit, and knocked down as Riddles came from behind when he had to slow down. 49 yards, but what a well-designed play. Ron, good block by Justin Watts, but uh, Rich Rodriguez in calling this game for Tommy Bowden uh, with Tommy Bowden is doing a very good job. Now Lawyer wide open on the outside. Again, formation problems for Florida State. They're breaking some, some assignments. Now this is Zachary. He is going to be stopped for no gain at the line of scrimmage. Gibson is there to make the tackle. Interesting with the pass. It looked as though they were going to throw the shovel pass of the Utah pass back into the line of scrimmage. And that kind of locked everybody up for a moment. And all of a sudden, boy, he looked like the first guy out to the workout. Without a doubt. You know, Terry Bowden's watching tonight, doing a nice job with ABC. Saw him in a couple interviews with his dad and his brothers. Second down and 10. And here's the quarterback draw. Dansler gets what he can. It's Corey Simon there to make the tackle. And Coach Bowden over on the sideline, as you can see, visiting with uh, Pete Warwick. Yeah, I go back again, Ron. This week has been an up and down week for this Florida State football team. A lot of attention on this young man. And it causes sometimes a loss of focus. That was LeMay, number 89, who came on late. Redshirt freshman tight end from Black Mountain, North Carolina. Better hurry. He didn't get it off. Or did he get the timeout called? Yep. It appears as though they got... Well, now the officials are discussing. And there is a timeout without a delay of game. So we'll take it with them. 7-3 Clemson. 1959 began the illustrious head coaching career of Bobby Bowden. While stalking the sidelines of his alma mater, Bowden led Howard College to a 14-0 victory over Marysville for his first career head coaching win. Well, the situation tonight, Clemson, a heavy underdog, up 7-3. Dancers pass, and Gardner again on that quick slant on the quick post. But I'll tell you, they've got a first down just outside the 10-yard line. And again, Dantzler took quite hey, a he, shot. That's what I was going to say, Ron. He's hurt. He took a shot from the linebacker, Bobby Rhodes, number 49. And he's going to have to come out of the ball game. And Willie Simmons is going to have to go in. Willie Simmons is a freshman. They were hoping to redshirt him. Well, this goes back to what we talked about just earlier on in the second quarter. That in this offense, as you look at Streeter, who was injured, uh, what, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I guess. Uh, Brandon suffered a broken collarbone. That was in that first quarter against North Carolina. And he's going to be out for the rest of the year. And as Mike said, Willie Simmons, the guy that they wanted to redshirt. But uh, as we talked about, Dantzler, in this offense, you're open. you get hit a lot. And... Uh, that's just something that can't be profitable against a team like Florida State. No, and they, they like Willie Simmons, no, Simmons, but he has not been in the ball game. They said it's going to be a great fight in spring football for the quarterback job, so they feel uh, very strongly about him. The dancer took a big hit from Bobby Rhodes. You notice that that not just the trainer was out there, that, that Tommy himself went out to take a look at his quarterback, hoping that it is only the wind that he has had knocked out of him and that it is not a shoulder or a collarbone or something like that. He drove his helmet. Into the sternum, yep. Ron, just the way Clemson has reacted this entire ball game, they came into this game believing they could win this football game. There's yeah, no doubt about it. You talked about it being a heavy underdog. From the time this game started, they were prepared by this man and his staff that they could win this football game. They could upset Florida State tonight. 
So the situation with the injury uh, now Clemson has used a timeout. Each team has one remaining with 333 left until halftime. And the seriousness of this is the ball is just outside the 12 yard line with the first down and you certainly don't want to waste a down in this situation. You you got to get some kind of points preferably if you're a Clemson fan or a coach you want a touchdown. Well and they took a timeout to settle everything down talk with it's a, this is a good timeout right here. They still have one left. Quickly, let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian, big hit to the sternum, just knocked the wind out of him. Ron, he's ready to go. Okay, that's uh, that's good news for Clemson fans. And you see exactly what's happening as they go with Zachary, and he's retreating. You better get down, son. You can't afford to lose ten. Zachary goes down, and Reynolds is there to make the tackle. Zachary was suspended. Ron did not play in the Marshall game. Averages four yards rushing. He's a good receiver out of the backfield. Lawyer comes back in at wide receiver. He is the second man at the bottom of your screen, a wide receiver. As you look at the numbers, and Clemson with the extremely profitable second quarter. Running play with Zachary has five, has ten, still on his feet, and he's down to the four-yard line. Tripped up by Sean Key. Taking advantage of that upfield rush by Seymour, and Simon, and Reynolds, and Jerry Johnson trying to get to Woodrow Dancer. They hit the draw trap inside of him. Mike Akeel Smith, who is their most consistent offensive lineman, number 61, was shaken up on the play, but he did not come out. He stayed in. He's the left tackle. Pitch goes to Zachary behind the blockers at the two at the one. Touchdown Clemson. Nope, they're going to say he has stopped at the one foot line. Bradley Jennings made the tackle. First down. Clemson quickly back to the line of scrimmage. It is a first down and goal. Quarterback sneak with Dantzler, and the arms go up. Touchdown, Tigers. Behind the block of Kyle Young, the sophomore center, and this crowd is standing and going a little crazy. You can't blame them. No, Ron, they're crisp. Everything they're doing on offense and defense, they just show so much quickness. Tony Lazaro kicked right down the pipe. A flag is down, and, and now get another flag. The kicker. A five-yard penalty for running into the kicker. Early in the third quarter with Clemson leading Florida State 14 to 3, the Knolls were able to cut the Tiger lead to eight when Sebastian Janikowski converted a 33-yard field goal attempt. So with Clemson now leading Florida State 14 to 6, we rejoin the game halfway through the third quarter. The Seminoles have the ball on their own 36-yard line, second down and 10, here on ESPN Classic. Reggie Herring trying to quickly to get some last minute signals into the defense and here goes the running play and Miner rattled off close to 10 yards as he is out to the 44 and Carswell from that safety position comes up to make the tackle credit Dan Kendra with an outstanding block on the play. Yeah I, I just feel like Florida State's going to win this football game Travis Miner has got to be the guy to get the ball in his hands a little bit more here in the third and fourth quarter. Run for 64 yards. He's been open coming out of the backfield. Now the cat and mouse game really, really picks up as Florida State going with the no huddle, trying to get Clemson confused. And this pass is good to Dugans and still on his feet and almost broke it at the 32 yard line. Now, Ron, that was a good play call by Mark Rick because the pressure that has come, but then all of a sudden you sprint out Chris Winky to the left side, you get good protection, you get a seal block, and then Dugan's clear out by Peter Warwick, and you get Dugan's break into the corner. Nice play called DeMarco Fox on coverage. 
three catches for 33 yards for Dugans. That one for 24. About to go under six minutes left in the third quarter. And in minor short yardage, maybe to the 30. Jason Holloman, junior out of Decatur, Georgia, is there to make the tackle. Again, that slows down the blitz. That that opens the passing game. I like the mix a little bit more in the second half than the first half. I think that uh, they're running the ball a little bit better right now at this point in the ball game, and minors become more of a factor. By the way, Reggie Herring just got four fresh new down linemen, defensive linemen in the ball game. Winky's pass well overthrown. Warwick, the intended receiver, and I'll tell you, Winky got knocked hard to the turf again. I beg your pardon. That's that is uh, on the lineman. Was it Whitaker? Thomas, Carlos Thomas. Was, Carlos Thomas went down. Yeah, and remember what Adrian said about the offensive line has the flu, so uh, that may have. Uh, Affected Tarlis Thomas. Tarlis, 6'5, 320, goes to the sideline, and Sharon Dorsey, 6'7, 325, a junior out of Jacksonville, comes in replacing him. You saw the numbers on third down conversions. They need to take it to the 22 yard line of Clemson. Here comes the blitz off the corner, and it is too tall for Morgan. I'll tell you, this is going to be a sizable field goal attempt right here. Now, Janikowski certainly has the leg, but uh, he's been a little shaky tonight. Yeah, Ron, they had that play. They had what they wanted to Robert Morgan. Just run the stop route at the sticks. Just threw it too high. They just, that should have been caught up. Why did he rifle arm that thing? 47 yard attempt from the far hash mark. Good pass, and he's going to be wide left for the second time tonight. Let's take a break. 536 left, third quarter. Clemson looking for the upset over number one Florida State. And they pull it off. And we're back to live action. You can see the Tigers right there at the line of scrimmage. They want this hurry up offense to get going. Dantzler, they fake the inside shuttle pass. Running for his life, and he just throws this one away. Heavy pressure by Brian Allen. It's the same play that they threw complete going the other direction in toward the boundary uh, last quarter. Ron, I still like the way this game is going for Clemson offensively. What they do is they... Hurry up the line of scrimmage. They give you a formation, and then Dantzler looks over the sideline on coverage. 5.29 to play, third quarter. Eight-point Clemson lead. Obviously inaudible at the line of scrimmage, but the play clock still is at 10 and now at 9. And he will move back to a shotgun. Flag. Ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. David Warren got a hand up. And Polly came over very close to making a pickoff. That'll be movement on Clemson. Declined the penalty. Third down. So third down and 10, and they need to take it out to their own 41-yard line to keep this one going. There you see the blitz. Nancy got a decision to make, and he broke the tackle, has five yards, still on his feet, and he has very close to 10. It depends on the spotting of the football, and from here it looks as though he's about a half-yard shot. But Mickey Andrews doesn't like the tackling he's seeing tonight. David Warren missed the tackle. Still short of the first down, Ron. So many missed tackles. Quickly, the special teams are on the field. Florida State still getting folks on. Reggie Durden, the deep man. And Hunt, high-hanging spiral. Durden under it at the 16. 
retreats to the open side of the field and is going to be tackled as he crosses the 30 yard line at 44 yards on the kick and 16 on the return. 1979. During his fourth season at Florida State, Bobby Bowden led the Seminoles into Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech. The Garnet and Goal would escape with a 17 to 10 victory over the Hokies in what was career victory 100. Well, on the line tonight, we all know he is at 299, trying for number 300, but this one has been anything but easy. We still have 19 minutes and 32 seconds left in the ball game, but Clemson has been outstanding so far. Winky's pass is caught. That's Warwick and tackled immediately at the 40. DeMarco Fox is there defensively. But his defense has now turned up the temperature a little bit on Clemson's offense. Three and outs and given the offense the football. Still think that Florida State has a good hold on this football game right now. Momentum's all in their favor. Back to the near side to Dugans. Stiff arms at the 50 and then runs out of bounds. And it's Carswell, and they have thrown a flag on a bump out of bounds. And uh, if it is at the end of the play. And Tommy Bowden doesn't like this call because it was a little push. The crowd's not going to like it either. It's on Robert Carswell. A dead ball. Personal foul. On the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Here's the play at the end, Ron. Ron Dugans makes the catch. Steps out of bounds, and there's the there's the push. Hey, fellas, there were harder hits on the intramural fraternity league field yesterday. That's let them play. Nobody came here tonight to see guys in stripes. From the 31-yard line, Miner. Carswell comes up to make the tackle. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten coming to you from Clemson, South Carolina. Seminoles driving, about to go under three minutes left, third quarter, and then the pass incomplete. Warwick, the intended receiver, and DeMarco Fox with the cover on him again. Ron, they have two on him. They, they uh, also got some help with DeMarco Fox on Peter Warwick. Anytime Peter Warwick's an inside receiver, there's going to be two on him. Good, good defense. Line to make the 22. Third down and seven. Winky's pass rifles it to Warwick. At the 20 yard line, first and goal. Seminoles polite on the stop. Well, Mark Rick says, you know, it was open before. I'm going to come right back to it. Same play, same curl route. Only this time, the first down for Peter Warwick. Just continue to go to him. You go to the best player you got. Eleven catches, 122 yards for Warwick. Here's Miner. Good block. Second good block. He'll turn it at the 15 and bites his way down to the 12-yard line. Fox and Ardley combining on the stop. The folks. Number 23, 6'1", 190 pounds out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Not huge in stature, but you give him the football in a big game in a tough situation like this, and don't be surprised if he runs right by big bodies because he's got to no, get the football, Ron. That's, he, it's he, exactly right. He's, he's the key to lot, this offense. A lot of heart with this young fellow. They give it to Kendra, trying to cross up the Clemson defense, and the fullback will maybe... Nope, he's not going to have the first down as they will spot it at the 10, about a half yard short. Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator, his defense has played this game with great effort tonight. 65 points they gave up in the last two games. Tonight they've held Florida State without a touchdown to this point. Marcus Outson 
Number 14 comes in at quarterback and takes a quarterback sneak, and he will have the first down at around the eight yard line. Winky on the sideline receiving a play. And of course, that's uh, Jeff Bowden that is standing there talking to him. So Outson, who played in a championship game last year because of the injury to Chris Winky, comes in for the quarterback sneak. Winky right back into the lineup. Outson's a pretty good size himself, 6'2, 220. <laughs> well, Winky at 6'5, yeah. 240. They don't have any small quarterbacks. There's the man I'm talking about. Miner almost broke it for the touchdown. Fox saved it. And they're going to spot the football at the three. The second half has been more of a running half for Florida State. They've done a better job running the football. Montre Holland, the big freshman out of Orr City, Texas, who got the start replacing the ill Jason Whitaker, is the person who was shaken up. And Jerry Carmichael, you see Jerry coming on. Uh, he's out of Somerville, South Carolina, a junior. Ron, net yardage rushing in the first half was 27 yards. They've done a much better job in the second half running the football and slowing this Clemson defense down a little bit more. Key is minor. Oregon State just letting UCLA have it. Oregon and Oregon State both have, uh, have really come on of late, haven't they? Yes, they have. Holland continues to be checked over by the medical staff down on the field and obviously this this is not a good sign with so many people there looking over him and he has not been moved as yet but it appears they are working with one of his legs Florida State, some of the players on the sideline, as I mentioned, supposed to go into the 30s here tonight and, uh, and pretty windy. And uh, those young men have not seen temperatures like this, certainly not this year, as Holland is being helped to his feet. And you can see it's his right leg. They're going to have to carry him off, and they may have to get some help from the bench because uh, Montre is a very... Large young fella at 6'3", 325. Second down and the ball about three and a half yards away. At the two, at the one is Miner, and Carson will stop him from taking it into the end zone. Then the difference, Travis Miner in this third quarter. Said before that you can almost feel like Florida State has got this game right where they want it right now. Clemson defenders bouncing around. You can see Robert Carswell, number nine, trying to get the crowd to make noise. There's the distance, third down, and just over a yard away from the touchdown. Left side, Travis Miner, touchdown Seminoles. They got to go for two right here to try to tie it. Kendra with the key block on the play. And now Winky comes over to ask the official or to tell him where he wants the ball placed. And it looks as though he's asked for it right in the yeah. middle of the field. We're going to bring in five wide receivers. That's Bolden who came in talking four to the last. Yeah, four wide receivers keep Miner in the backfield. Trying to tie it at 14. Winky tries to run and then just has to tuck it away. Bryant with the tackle and there's a flag down. A delay a game. Now, have the lay of game on the offense. It's not bad Mike, though because it gives them a little more room and that play can wash that one away. Mike, if they get the two-point conversion, 
That's going to be five points that they got on second chances because it was they yep. had to lay a game field on a goal field goal and now this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring in Dan Kendra. Get a little more protection for uh, Winky on this play. Janikowski bouncing on the sideline. They're not going to use him, though. This is for a two-point conversion. Winky right over the middle. Got him open, and it's Kendra who they throw it to. We are tied at 14 with 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Ron, that was a nice call because they had the fake of the isolation inside. Kendra was a receiver, got behind the linebacker. Winky put it right there, and uh, Florida State back in this football game. Watch number 10, the fullback, just sneaks through. Nobody's going to pick him up right here. And he gets right behind number 43, Keith Adams, for the two-point play. Now, this does a couple things, Ron. It puts more pressure on Clemson now. Now you're playing a different ball game now. You don't have the lead. The offense, three and out the last couple plays. They need an offensive series bad by Clemson. I talked about just a few moments ago. Those long drives keeping the football away from the Florida State offense. And you're exactly right in the third quarter, we have 10 ticks left in the, on the clock until we head to the final period. There and Miner's been, been yeah, a difference. That, also. He has been the biggest difference. Now Woodrow Dantzler has to find a little bit of a, a play mix for himself. A little running game and a little short passing game that was successful in the first half. Janikowski's kick. This one 10 yards deep, but again, no return. Five seconds left, third quarter. So the number one team of the land has come back and tied this football game at 14 apiece. And it happened with 10 seconds left, third quarter. Dantzler sets in the pocket, going to run it. Trying to get out of harm's way. Gets one block, but cannot get away from Tate Cody. And then goes down, and that'll be the final play of the third quarter. So we're tied at 14, and Clemson, for the first time in the second half, has an opportunity to get their offense going, uh, which they have not been able to do in the second half of play. Danzler's going to keep it. 30, 35. Who will he take a lick from Key? And also Jennings, but I'll tell you, I think he picked up the first down, and if he did, that's the initial first down the second half. of the second half. As we go under nine minutes to play in the ball game. Dantzler puts air under this one and caught it out of bounds. A lot of bumping over there. Take Cody, but uh, the crowd's going to want a flag, but there, there's not going to be one. Ron, you got to credit Clemson. though. they, they still have fight in them. Uh, you get tied up 14 to 14. They've not had good field position. Their offense has struggled the second half. You said the first first down they've had in the second half. Still alive in this football game. Florida State can't put them away. Dantzler using just like a running back, and he's going to be knocked down for a loss. And how many tackles does Corey Simon have tonight? The, the big senior has really stepped up and done a tremendous job. We have it. We've just been told officially nine tackles for Corey Simon. We talked about he was the guy, one of the senior leaders. He called a meeting out under the tree without the coaches there to talk about keeping her head on straight and watching out for distractions. So he has done his part tonight. Manson throws this one away and very wisely so. And again, I'll tell you, David Warren on the pass rush tonight is the Seminoles have a player down. And now here comes a late flag, a very late flag. 
but Warren has been outstanding in the pass rush this evening. Talk about substitutions. Chuck Amato and that whole defensive staff, they keep fresh defensive linemen so he can chase the quarterback in the fourth quarter. You know what's what Tommy, this team's hurt himself. They've hurt themselves. That's four, big penalties. Four personal fouls tonight. Dead ball. After the play was over, personal foul on the offense. 15 yards. The way that computes run is that's one less first down the Florida State offense has to get when you give them that kind of penalty. Well, plus the fact, look at the field position they're going to give up, Mike, because now. This ball is going to be snapped from the 20 rather than the 35 yard line. Fourth down and 26 following that penalty. Line drive kick over the shoulder catch by Warwick at the 30. Flags everywhere as he goes down at the 30 yard line. It's Brian Mance who has been very good on special teams. On the return, we have a 10-yard penalty, a block in the back on the return team. Florida State has been penalized a bunch tonight also. Well, look at this as Mickey Andrews is all over Edwards. Mike, that's a 51-yard punt, and then you add the penalty on there. Talk about flipping the field. Yeah, there's the push right in the back. Mario Edwards is called for the push. So instead of getting good field position, Florida State has it 80 yards away with 745 showing on the clock. They're still tied at 14. Dugan, and he gets out of bounds. The clock will halt with 740 to play. And you just think of what's riding on this game with 740 to go in the clock. Now, Tommy Bowden on his side, he said, if I lose, I'm just three and four. But now he's so much into this ball game. He won he's always wanted to win this football game. Bobby Bowden on the other side has got a national championship possibility going out the door here. Winky, very deep drop. Dugans again as long as that cornerback stays off that far. They're going to continue to throw that route. Yeah, safety's over the top of uh, Peter Warwick on the other side. The check in on the sideline with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, an hour ago, I would have said that the element, the wind that was blowing about 20 miles per hour, would have been in Winky's face at this point. It's uh, kind of fouled up his tight spirals in the first quarter, but the wind is pretty well gone. When you're number one team in the nation, maybe a couple of breaks go your way. <laughs> <laughs> a higher beam has taken over, is what you're suggesting, Adrian. Winky out on the flat. That's to Menace. And he gets what he can. Knocked out of bounds by Bodrick. See, and they're not using very much time off this clock. No, they're doing it fast. They're chewing up ground right here with three quick passes. Let's see if they still go to Dugans on the other side away from uh, Peter Ward. Where they went, he broke the tackle at the 50, and now here goes Dugan. Hit from behind. Fox made the stop, but he's all the way to the 35. Now, Ron, what they've done is, and again, credit to Bobby Bowden and Mark Rick. Now they're going away from the side that uh, Peter Warwick's lined up on because the safety's over the top of Peter Warwick. So you know you got one on one over there on Ron Dugans because you got an inside receiver, and Alex Hardley makes the tackle. So they've hit on something right now. On the opposite side of Warwick. Dugan, seven catches, 83 yards. And here's Miner. Carson stops him after a game of two, maybe three. Well, you, sometimes when you're calling a game, you explore and you explore and you explore, and then all of a sudden you hit something. I, I'd keep going back to Dugan's over there. They're going to they're going to go away from uh, Warwick again. Let's see if he gets what he want, what he wants on that side again.
Winky tucks it. 30. 25, and he slid. Keith Adams was there to put the stopper on him, and from where they've marked it, I think he has picked up the first down. A good hit by Keith Adams. He's been an active linebacker all night, sophomore. Miss Winky would like to get down right here and uh, the shoulder hit. It is a first down. Winky knocked down at the line of scrimmage, and it was Bryant who got his hands up. Childress, I beg your pardon. It's exactly where Chris Winky was trying to go back to that side again to hit Dugans. Eason, I beg your pardon here. 98, Nick Eason. Here's Dugans again on the top. They're just going to keep throwing that all night. But Eason foiled their attempt. Normally, the on that pattern, the tackle on the outside does a chop at the line of scrimmage, at least to make him grab for the turf or not be tall. And he was unable to do it. 6-16 to play, still tied. Miner hit at the line of scrimmage, will fight his way forward for maybe a half as Bryant is there to make the stop. Also, you can see Terry Jolly helping out on the tackle as we go under six minutes. And then Janikowski becomes the big factor here. Now the X factor to come in and, and kick the field goal if they can't get the first down here. I'd go right back to Dugans again. Janikowski two of four tonight. He's been wide left twice. They need to take it just inside the 15, and they give it to Miner, and he's not going to be close. The thing is, they shove him out of bounds to stop the clock. Eric Meekins is there defensively, and it will be Sebastian Janikowski. That's the safe call, Ron, the draw. Because you keep the ball on the ground, you, you feel this guy's an All-American, Sebastian Janikowski, so turn the game over to him. You know if he makes the field goal, he's going to kick the ball out of the end zone for the kickoff and then turn it over to your defense. This is going to be a 40-yard attempt. It's been the other hash mark that has plagued him tonight. Let's see if he hooks this one in. Yep, he does, and you can tell and it should be this way for a left footer that that is the better angle for him and the number one team in the nation has taken the lead for the second time tonight 17 14 we'll be right back back in clemson south carolina and here's the situation five minutes and 26 seconds left in the ball game and the number one team in the nation as that man tries to achieve his 300th career win, has just gone on top 17 to 14. They led three to nothing, and then Clemson came on to uh, score 14 unanswered points. But with nine minutes to go in the third quarter, as Mike Gottfried so accurately described, Florida State really swung things and took over the momentum of this football game. And it is up to Clemson to arrest that from him. This is Wofford. And he will take it out over the 20, maybe the 22-yard line is where he wound up. As Florida State has a player who's down, and it's Gene June, who has been shaken up, the junior out of Boynton Beach. Well, after that last field goal, uh, what did what did Ann Bowden feel about that? No, too much time up there. Touchdown. <laughs> I don't know if that was directed at Bobby or, or who. <laughs> well, it's at Bobby, yeah. <laughs> well, you can see Florida State clearly offside as Zachary takes the uh, the run to the to the right. And they're going to get five yards off that one as David Warren comes over to make the tackle. She's seen enough games. <laughs> no, they're not over till they're over either. Yeah. 5-12 on the clock. She knows. No, they've been married 50 years, and she has seen a lot of football games. You're right. Jamal Reynolds is the man who jumped across into the neutral zone. Of the defense, five yards, Emily still have first down.
Clemson needs a big play. They need, you know, they, they've been milking yardage. They, they haven't been able to get a big pass play. They need that badly. I don't think they can take the ball the, the distance. Five and six yards. Mansler faked the pass. There was nothing there. Actually, didn't fake it. He was going to throw it. Nothing there. Tucked it and ran, and he's very close to the first down. have to be impressed with the work of Dantzler tonight but you also uh, have to credit as Mike said Mickey Andrews and the defensive staff and the adjustments that that they have uh, made in this game if you're wondering about Tony Lozara and what he has done his longest as far as a field goal 43 yards against NC State they got a distance to go to get it in that range. I was wondering that too. Well, right here, Mikey would be uh, about a 73 yeah, yarder. Yeah, they got to get up a little bit. That is the third first down of the second half for Clemson. Talk about adjustments defensively. Dancer gets this one. Had him open, and here comes a flag. Came over and tried to take him out of the play. It's Gardner. It's going, to be, it's going to be a hold on Mario Edwards, or is it going to be a personal foul? Hold. And a lot of flags thrown tonight. Heard up here. Sean Key. And the interesting thing about it is Sean had him in the vulnerable position that it's Sean who was down after throwing that lick. So the fourth first down of the second half for the Clemson Tigers, and it is a new first down. The new line of scrimmage is the Clemson 42. Clock 429 remaining. Get a little closer to that field goal range, Ron, with that penalty. A lot of interesting ball games today. Ohio State came back and uh, won the football game from Minnesota. They were in danger of not going to a bowl game. Boston College, I thought, played great football today. Uh, Tom O'Brien, Frank Spaziani, defensive coordinator, really a good plan. But just let it get away. This is the coach's poll. And, of course, uh, Nebraska lost, Michigan lost. How about Illinois? They got to be celebrating up there tonight. Texas a &M. Texas a &M's going down. That's so right. They had, shake up here. To, they've already had 51 points scored on them tonight. <laughs> Get 51 points scored against you don't belong in the top 10. Maybe the top 20. Quarterback draw and look at this job. Allen, Brian Allen, the junior out of Lake City, Florida. And Florida State, they had gone to school at halftime on the adjustments to make and what Woodrow Dantzler was doing in the first half and making them look silly. Uh, I'm not so sure they didn't simplify simplify their plan a little bit second half with all the formations Clemson shown. Here's the pitch to Zachary. Now he throws it back and it's a throwback pass to the quarterback dancer. The Florida State stayed at home and that is Chris Hope. That is a nice job defensively. They're going to have the first down. It's good for 13 yards. But most defenses would have been everybody. Yeah. Student body to the right side of the field. And they stayed at home to keep this from turning into a touchdown. Gardner throws the pass. You're right. He doesn't stay at home. That's a touchdown. <laughs> or a long, long play from scrimmage anyway. Well, that's two trick plays for T. Bowden. I think of a song, Oh My Papa, was sang by Eddie Fisher in the 50s. That's what he's saying to his dad. 
over there on the sidelines. Timeout on the field, 341 remaining. 17-14, Florida State. We are back 17 to 14 our score Florida State on top but the Clemson Tigers who have only 61 yards in the second half of play Mike this drive right here they don't need a great deal more they'll be in field goal range been a good drive good uh, good play calling by Rich Rodriguez and Tommy Bowden they can stop and go. Flag comes down, and he caught. almost caught it. Gardner almost caught the ball anyway, and Mario Edwards could do nothing but hold. And if he had not, if that ball is caught, he goes for six. The yardage just keeps mounting on uh, Florida State's penalties tonight. Mario Edwards goes to the sideline and Cleavon Thomas the junior out of uh, Miami number eight comes in replacing him at that uh, quarterback spot. Held him all the way. Mickey Andrews giving a little lecture on the far sideline first and ten. Going to run it not very much there is Florida State doing a nice job. They were fooled a few times in the first half on that play, but Jerry Johnson just shuts that one down. And Ron, what, what Florida State's trying to do with the bump and run coverage is take away those short routes, and that's why Edwards has been called for holding twice because he's got beat twice off the ball. Mickey Andrews continues to holler instructions to his defense quick pass Gardner boy he got belted and knocked down by Thomas very quickly he'll be at the 30 yard line and now this this down right here as we have 248 and counting left in the ball game becomes monster big third down and they need to take it to the 25 yard line because a field goal attempt if they don't get anything here even if they pick up a couple is still going to be in the vicinity of 45 yards. Florida State looks like they're going to come after Dantzler here. Dantzler retreats, gets his pass away, has it complete, and Zachary is tackled just short of the first down. Ron, that was a good tackle right there by Chris Hope, number 28, the backup safety. Timeout is called by the Clemson Tigers with 2.01 left in our ball game. Here's the play pressure middle linebacker blitz and Brian Allen. Here's the ball thrown but in, to Travis Zachary but Chris Hope made that tackle a yard short of the first down. Mike let me ask you this. I know there's been a lot of hype about this and it is a great situation first time in Division One history. But this is more than Bobby bargained for, I think. I think he knew that Tommy had talent. They had done a great job with the coaching staff. But uh, I don't think he expected this here tonight. No, and I go back to the all week, you know, the Peter Ward deal. I, I think that has had to take a lot of focus off the of Florida State coaches, players, is he, isn't he? And, uh, and, I, and I agree with what you say. I think Clemson's attacked this whole ball game philosophy on offense, defense, and the kicking game. They ran a couple trick plays. They've let it all out of the bank to try to win this football game. Let me ask you a question. All right, if, if you're Bobby Bowden, and right here, Clemson comes out and lines up for what appears to be a field goal attempt, would you play safe to make sure you don't get a third trick play run on you? Yeah, I, I would because I still think I got the better football team, and if we do head to overtime, I still think I got the better football team in that, in that time frame, and they're going to try to kick the field goal here to tie it up. So the ball is resting at the 25-yard line. The knee will go down. And there's not going to the, be any fake here. At the here. 32, it is a 42-yard attempt. The longest that he has ever kicked is 43. That was against NC State. Good pass. Ball is down. Does he have the distance? No, it is short and off to the left with 1.57 showing on the clock. 
Ron, good pressure by T. Cody, number 27. He really came in from the right side. He didn't hit that ball well at no. all. Tony Lozara with an opportunity to send us into a tie ball game and the possibility of overtime. Ron, Clemson only has one timeout left, so uh, with 1.57 on the clock, Florida State's got a chance to burn this one away. Gallon effort by this Clemson football team, not over yet. Travis Miner breaks it big out of the 30, close to the first down hey, is in the vicinity of the 33-yard line as Chad Carson will make the stop along with Fox. And you know, interesting that everybody talked about the joke, not joke, but what everybody says was, hey, Tommy, lose but lose close, and then everybody is happy. Well, that may be what happens here tonight, but Tommy's not going to no. be happy because they had an opportunity. They had an opportunity to win this game. It's a credit to Tommy Bowden and his coaching staff because they had their ball club ready for the upset. Talking to his quarterback, knowing that if they get it back, as Florida State runs it straight ahead and is close to the first down, Keith Adams will make the stop. They're not going to get it back, Ron. I, I doubt that no. they will. Our Visa players of the game, and both of them come from the defensive side of the ball. Corey Simon for the Florida State Seminoles with nine tackles tonight and made some key plays. And from Clemson, Robert Carswell, 13 tackles, 10 of those solo, and one sack this evening. Congratulations to those two young men, both defensive players, being our Visa players of the game tonight. Medicine motion straight ahead with the carry and the hit at the line of scrimmage. Let me ask you another question as the clock runs down. Is this victory too close? Could Penn State move up? Will Florida State hold on to number one? I think they'll hold on to number one uh, with this win, but I think Virginia Tech's gaining on them. I think Penn State's gaining on them, and I, I really believe Kansas State after today will be a lot closer also. They have not been impressive. This has not been an impressive football team uh, to this point in the season. Well, some heartbreak on the Clemson side of the field because, as Mike said, these youngsters came to the ballpark tonight thinking and knowing that they could win this football game. They could not just play them close as Lazaro looks on, and, of course, his regrets because he didn't hit that field goal attempt well, that one that could have tied us at 17. But the Clemson kids really they had a great game plan. They came in here and they executed well. One of the first things you have to think of is four personal foul penalties, two of them giving key first downs on third down situations. Played really big roles in this ball game. Ron, there's Dave Hart with uh, Bobby Bond. Dave Hart's been through a lot uh, this past week. The athletic director at uh, Florida State, there's a lot of people talk that he may be the Alabama AD, but uh, I think he's not involved in that job any longer. So uh, he was one of the candidates. So that should be the final play of the ball game. And we see history tonight in two different situations. That young man against his father, first time for father-son to face off in Division I. And for Bobby Bowden, win number 300. And it did not come easy. 17 to 14, the Florida State Seminoles, the number one team in the land, have pulled off the victory and remained undefeated. Bobby continuing to look for his son, Tommy, down on the field. You can see the mass of media folks who were down there, the police trying to get them together, and now they finally are there for the handshake. Adrian Carson is standing by, and as soon as we can, we'll try to get an interview with Bobby, and congratulations to him over that 300th victory tonight. And let's check in with Adrian. Adrian? Bobby and Tommy, congratulations to you both. Coach Bowden, congratulations on your 300th victory, barely. Tell you what, when you take all the family fun out of it, you had your hands full. Yeah, I got mad at Tommy there, first corner, first half, but we were lucky to win it. Tommy and him 
I thought Tommy did a better job than we did, but we had more, more probably had more players. Tommy, especially with the pace of your offense and what you did to create defensive confusion for your father's team in the first half. Well, it, it's no good unless you stay on the field. With too many three and outs, I, yeah. I, don't, I was waiting to cross the 50 to run that play. We couldn't, yeah. couldn't cross the 50. Yeah. And they, they, they were too good in the second. They made a did a great job of coaching in the second half, making adjustments, and we couldn't. Well, you ran out of tricks. Yeah, you I, ran out I, of I tricks. Used them all. <laughs> I used them all. You're both safe because this is what my and mother wanted. Yeah, Tommy Ann, lost. Ann both. wanted this. No, no, this no, is no. what Ann wanted. He's safe. He's safe. <laughs> Not me. Ron, I think they're both going to celebrate tonight. Well, Tommy is quite a competitor. He has started off doing an awfully good job at Clemson, and you'll hear a lot from T-Bowden at this university. Again, our congratulations to Bobby for getting victory number 300. Final score, Florida State 17 and Clemson 14.